Today we will perform a frequency response analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This type of analysis is done to observe the behavior of a component under dynamic conditions with sinusoidally varying loads. We will perform direct frequency response analysis on a sheet metal bracket to find its most vibrating frequencies in the range of 0 to 1000 Hz. The nodal displacement versus frequency graphs will be plotted during post processing to observe the response of the structure to applied boundary conditions. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the frequency response analysis setup. The first step is to create a material and property for the sheet metal component. For this analysis, we will be using the newer interface of Hypermesh, that is Hyperworks. Once the CAD is imported in Hypermesh, we can see the bracket geometry. To start the setup, let's change some preferences from file menu. In the browsers tab, turn on the organization setting. We will disable auto scroll option. Apply the changes and exit. Now we can see the bracket component in model browser. Let's start by creating a new material. Provide a name to it. We will specify the default mechanical properties of steel. Now create a new property and provide a name to it. With card image as P shell, select the steel material in proper selection box. Let's use thickness value T as 2 mm. Now we will assign this property to the bracket component. The material gets assigned automatically. Now go to the mesh ribbon. Select general 2D mesh option. We will first mesh these circular surfaces to get a good mesh flow around the whole locations. Set the mesh size to 4. In the advanced settings and adaptive mesh controls, we will keep all options at their default settings. Create the mesh. To get quad elements throughout the whole edges, we will adjust the node density along these edges. Select the circular edges at all 5 whole locations. We will edit the node density manually. Now enter density value as 12 and apply the changes. We can see that quad elements are now created at all whole locations. Now we can start meshing the remaining surfaces. Select the remaining surfaces manually. With mesh size as 4, create the mesh. We can use the show hide option to hide the geometry and view only the elements. Let's switch to shaded elements view for better visualization of the mesh. Now create a new component to store RBE2 elements. Open the RBE2 tool from model ribbon. Switch dependent node to edges. Now select the circular edge. Click on the DOF option and select all degrees of freedom. Create the RBE2 element. Similarly, we will create a RBE2 element at all other locations. These rigid elements will be used to apply the boundary conditions for frequency response analysis in the next step. 
Now we can start setting up the boundary conditions for this frequency response analysis. The master nodes of the corner rigids will be fixed in space and a unit load will be applied on the master node of the center rigid. A frequency range of 0 to 1000 Hz will be specified for the analysis. We will extract the displacement and stress contours for post processing. Let's take a look at how this is done. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the BCs tool from Analyze ribbon. Select the constraints option. We will select the master nodes of these corner rigids in entity selector box. Let's change the relative size to 50. With all degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Exit the BCs tool. Now create another load collector to store D area type of constraints. Open the BCs tool and select constraints option. Let's select the master node of this center rigid. Uncheck all degrees of freedom except translation along y axis that is DOF2. Enter scale factor value as 1. Now switch the load type to D area. Create the constraint. Exit the constraints panel. To define the frequency dependent load input, create a new curve. The curve editor opens up. Enter a name for this curve. We will enter a constant load of magnitude 1 Newton through the frequency range of 0 to 1000 Hertz. Once the curve is defined, close the curve editor. Now select the curve and change its card image to table D1. Create a new load collector to link the tabular load data with D area entry. Change the card image of this load collector to R load 2. In the excited field, select the D area load collector. In the TB field, select the table D1 curve. The default type is set to load. Create a new load collector to specify frequency range for frequency response analysis. Change the card image to Frick I. The Frick 1 option is used for frequency response analysis. Enter initial frequency value as 0 Hz. We will specify increments of 5 Hz and 200 such increments which sets the total frequency range till 1000 Hz. To combine the loads and constraints into a frequency response analysis, create a new load step. Change the analysis type to frequency response direct. Select the SPC load collector in SPC selection box. Select the R load load collector in D load field. Lastly, assign the frequency load collector in respective field. To extract specific outputs for post processing, add the global output request card to the setup. Check the box next to Displacement. Set Format as H3D and Option as All. We will also output the stress results in H3D format. 
To plot the graph of displacement versus frequency during post processing, we need the node ID of the center node. Open the numbers tab from tools panel. Select the master node of the center rigid. Check the box next to display and turn it on. Note that the node ID is 3558. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's export the solver deck as an FEM file. Make sure to save the file in a separate folder. Set export options to all and complete the export. To run the analysis, we will use the compute console. In the input field, select FEM file which we exported in the previous step. Clear all the options. Let's use the NT option to allot 6 processing cores for this run. Apply the selected options. Click on Run to launch the Optistruct solver. This may take some time to solve. Once the analysis is complete, we can view the results. Close the solver windows. Now create a new page for post processing. The client will be set to Hyperview by default. We will use the Open File option. Select the H3D file from Working Directory. Apply the results. Open the Contour tab and apply the displacement results for first frequency. Let's set the numeric format of legend to fixed. Now we can switch the frequencies and observe respective displacement contours for each increment. Similarly, we can also view the stress results for each frequency increment. Set the averaging method to simple and apply the stress results. To find the most vibrating frequencies, let's plot a graph of displacement versus frequency. Split the window into two parts. In the second window, switch to line chart option. The client will be automatically changed to hypergraph. Now open a file. In the X source, Select the same H3D file from working directory. Keep the type on frequency. In Y source, with displacement selected, enter the center node ID. Select the Y component. Preview the graph before plotting it. Now plot the graph. We can see two critical frequencies in the range of 0 to 1000 Hz. These frequencies cause maximum deformation of the bracket and must be avoided during operation. We can query the points on the graph to check values of frequency and corresponding displacement of the master node. We have successfully performed frequency response analysis and extracted the critical frequencies of the component in given frequency range. And this is how we can perform a frequency response analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up. It helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.